Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to review the top down center out method of pants fitting. Now I have been working on this method on myself for the past week and I have to say it's been a long time that I've been so excited about working on a project. I'm having a ball. And I think part of the reason for that is this method allows you to really get a lot done with a single leg muslin. So it's not my usual process of adjusting the pattern, making a muslin, trying it on, adjusting that muslin, transferring adjustments to my pattern, and then sometimes cutting out another muslin to see how those changes worked out. I mean, there is some transfer of adjustments to the paper pattern after you do some fitting, but it just seems to me like it's a little bit easier of a process. Plus, this method inspired me to get my second uh, full-length mirror that's been stored in my garage for I don't know how many years, and now that I'm working with two mirrors, it really blows my mind that I can really see what I'm doing in the back and I don't have to like take pictures of myself or run downstairs and have my husband take pictures of my back view. It's been a lot easier to work on this project and also the bodice draft I'm doing during FabFit Friday. So that would be my first thing. If you're going to work on this process, you really need two mirrors. So think about that. They don't have to both be full length. You can have a shorter mirror and a full length mirror. Um, you could have, you could use your iPad, for example, if you can set it up somewhere where it's angled properly so you can see, you know, the back view in the larger mirror. But you do really need a two mirror setup. So I wanted to make sure I told everybody that before I got going here. Today what I'd like to do is talk about the five steps of the top down center out method and then we will go through the steps so you can get an understanding of how this method works. I'm going to show you how to make your waistband. I have some tips for that and then I also have the peppermint pattern in front of me. We will look at that and I'll show you how to pick a size and then I'll show you my prepared half muslin so you can see how that works. And I wore my boy short underwear so I could take some pictures of me wearing my half muslin so you can see how that looks. And then I'm just gonna show you two versions of the peppermint, uh, the peppermint magazine wide leg pants that I did. Um, both of these versions still need work, but it's my initial try. Going forward, I'm going to be working with this method using my own pattern. Um, if you're wondering why I didn't use a J Stern design pattern to, to learn this method, I wanted to take myself out of the equation in terms of having preconceived notions about what a pattern is going to do or how it's going to fit. So I'm working with patterns that I have no idea how they were drafted and how they fit. So I'm kind of following along the process like you would if you were to purchase a pattern and start working with it without any prior knowledge about it. So let's start with the waistband. That is step one um, in this process. I'm going to show you my waistband and I want to talk about it a little bit. So you can see here the Peppermint Magazine Wide Leg Pant Pattern has a curved waistband or a contoured waistband. This allows the waistband to sit a little bit lower if you like that. And I just want to say when you're making your waistband, you can then fit it onto your body wherever you wear your pants. So if you have a tilted waist, you know, let's say it's lower in the front, higher in the back, or if you like a lower rise or a higher at the natural waist, wherever you want to put this waistband, you're going to fit this to yourself so it's snug and it's not sliding around. This is really important because you need to have a static anchor to fit your half muslin. So if you notice here, what I did was, 
Initially, I made it just like described in the Threads Magazine article, where I used a very firm interfacing. You can see that on the inside. I turned down the top edge, the top half inch, and sewed it down. And then I was working with it, and I was pinning it to myself, and I found that to be challenging for me because I have a large bust, so you need, the sen you need it closed at center front, you need the center back and the center back, and I just found it fussy to have um, the pins I was using. You can absolutely use safety pins if you'd like, and I actually recommend that over regular straight pins because you don't want to stab yourself. So if you're good with pins and you like to close your waistband with pins, that is a wonderful way to do it. But I wanted to make it a little bit easier for myself. So what I did was I took a two inch wide piece of Velcro and I sewed it on to the ends of my waistband. So if I were to close this, let me just close it. You can see here, the center front is right on this edge. Okay, so I have a very clear mark of what my center front is. Now in the back, you need to be able to feel where the center back is. Um, you can sew, initially I just sewed a line of stitching there and you could kind of feel that. But then I thought to myself, why don't I put a piece of Velcro just off center so when I stick the seam allowance of the pants there, my actual center seam will be lined up with the center back of the waistband. So that made me much happier. And then the other thing is, I sewed a piece of half inch Velcro here, just along the side that I'm fitting. So I'm always gonna be working with my right side, I'm sorry, my left side. So you can see here, I've got the Velcro here, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna actually give you a couple extra hands. So you might be wondering, what is this Velcro here gonna stick to? I will show you that a little bit later. But this is my waistband. Um, if you're not working with the Peppermint Magazine pattern and you're working with a straight waistband or a pants pattern that has a straight waistband, I think that that's actually easier because it just sits right where it sits um, at your smallest um, measurement at your waist. And um, if you're going to be making a straight wa waistband, I did order and have in my online store now band roll. And band roll is a very firm, non-crushable, non-twistable, non-curly waistband interfacing. And I got it in one inch wide and one and a half inch wide um, widths. So if you're interested in getting some of this, I have a link for it in the description below. But I just want to point out to you, you cannot use this for a curved waistband. So if you're following along with me um, in the Peppermint magazine pattern, it's got a curved waistband. You can't use this. But if you're, if you're making a straight waistband, this stuff is amazing. All right, so there's that. And basically, you can see, you know, I wrap this around me, and maybe I'll stand up and show you. So you want to get your waistband so that when you put it on, it's going to stay exactly where you put it on. I don't really have, I mean, I can stick my finger under there, but there's not a lot of ease. It's firm, it's comfortable, and this is where the waistband of my pants is going to sit. All right, so that's the waistband. So the next step is to prepare your pattern. And I have this lovely little diagram of the back leg of my pattern. So I just want to show you here. This is what the Peppermint Magazine, I keep calling it the Peppermint Magazine Wide Leg Pattern. It was actually designed by In The Folds. And I think this is probably an Australian company. And I want to say that from a pattern drafting point of view, it's a very nice, well-balanced pattern. The inseam and side seams match. Everything is really easy to work with with this pattern. So you can see here, 
in the red, I have the hem, and it goes all the way up the inseam, and it goes through the crotch seam up to the waist. That whole line is red. Notice that from up here where the original waist was, all the way down the crotch, and then down the inseam, all the way across the hem. The reason why I'm pointing that out to you is that when you're working with this method, you want to really consider the whole crotch and the inseam, and the whole crotch to the inseam, one continuous line. That's the first thing you're going to be fitting, is the top down, center out. So top down is your first fitting, um, the first thing you're going to fit. So we're going to be considering the crotch and the inseam a continuous line. And then the hem is very important in this method. When I tested it with my daughter a few weeks ago, I tried her first because I didn't have my double mirror set up for yet. Um, I cut out the pants, put it on her, and it was too long. And what did I do? I hacked off the leg while I was sitting on the floor. It is very important that the hem is pressed up and a length where it's hanging because it needs to be parallel to the floor. That is going to be your horizontal balance line. So while you're used to making lines down the leg, let's say at crotch level, at the knee, at the full hip, you can still do that if you want to, but the primary location we're going to be looking for for a horizontal balance line is going to be at the hem. And then you'll notice the out seam is green. That's going to be the last thing we're going to be working with after we um, fit the waist down to the inseam, making sure the hem is parallel to the floor. Then we're going to go from center to the side to do the rest of the fitting. So that's why I have this neat little color-coded um, pattern. But the things that you want to do to prep your pattern, you want to add extra at the top. So if you're a size 14 or smaller, you can probably get away with adding 2 inches. If you are a size 16 or above, add more. I added 4 inches so I would have plenty of fabric above the original waistline so that I could adjust the center front and back because again that's the first step. So you can see here I'm just going to color it in black. This is all the extra that I added. Okay. Notice I extended the dart all the way up to the new top edge of the pattern and I extended the back crotch seam all the way up to the new waistline. Notice, did I change the shape of my crotch? Nope, I just continued it. So if I were doing this on my full size pattern, you're going to line your ruler up with the crotch at the angle it is, and you're just gonna keep going to extend it like this. Okay, so that's how you add at the waist, at the top. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna line it up with the straight edge of the pattern here and you're going to extend a line all the way up to the top of the waist like this. Let me just darken it in. Okay, so you're creating a extra wedge of fabric here. Okay, that's to help fit the waist. One thing that's not on this diagram is extra safety seam allowance on the side seam. I recommend adding extra there too. Now here's how you can decide how much you need to add. You want to look at the size chart and you want to pick the size that matches your full hip first. I picked the size F because my full hip is 43 inches and size F recommends exactly 43 inches for the full hip. So I worked with the F there, but then when I checked the waist measurement, I was actually an H because my tummy is big and I needed a bigger size. So here is a very important consideration when you're picking your size and you're tracing your pattern. Do not blend between sizes. So you don't want to start at 
the bigger size if your tummy is bigger than your hip like you don't want to go from h and then grade down to f by the time you get to your full hip and leg area you want to keep the shape of the pattern as it is so there is no grading between sizes one thing you can do though is if you are two different sizes like I am originally I tried using the F size the smaller size I traced out the crotch curve and the whole inseam because there is no grading here very much so I just picked the smaller F size and I graded I traced that and then when I got over to the side seam I traced the H size so my side seam was two sizes bigger because I needed that up at the top. Another thing you can do is consider how much of a difference you have between your full hip size and your waist. If it's only an inch, you know, or a half an inch, you can just trace that smaller size and then add enough safety seam allowance so it accommodates your waist. And then also remember, you have this extra wedge here at the waist, which adds um, ease that you can bring back into your pattern. So very important, do not blend between sizes down the side seam, okay? Pick one size for the side seam, one for the inseam, or just use your full hip measurement and then add to the side seam. So for example, if I had just used F, which I did do my second try, I added an inch and a half, which I'm only gonna use a half an inch here because this is a small diagram, but I basically just added all the way up to the top an extra inch and a half like this, okay? So that will give me the ease I need here for my waist working with a smaller size. All right, so let me just show you what the full size um, pattern looks like. And then I'm going to show you my personal pattern. So you can see here, you know, it's very easy to work with. There's a size key over here printed right on the pattern sheet. So you can easily pick your size. Um, each size has a different line style. And then here's what the back looks like. Okay. One thing that I thought was a little um, interesting is they actually included the stitching line on this pattern and it's slightly less opaque. It's a little bit faded out. So if you're wondering why it looks like there's two sets of patterns here kind of askewed, the faded line is your stitching line. And basically what that's telling you is it's a half an inch seam allowance here because if we measure it, it's a half an inch. So not five eighths, half inch seam allowance. All right, and then just to take a peek over here, this is the waistband pieces. So there's a, a full back piece and then there's a left and right front um, to sew together. So those are your waistband pieces. All right, so that's the pattern. Um, let's just take a look at my personal pattern here. So you can see, I did all of the steps. I added extra. There's my little waist at wedge where I went straight up. There's my extra. Now this has already been trimmed after I fit the first muslin, so I don't have four inches here anymore. But I do wanna show you, if I lay them like side seams next to each other, you can see I needed to add two and a half inches to the rise at the center back and maybe an inch and a, almost an inch and a half at the center front. So I did have to um, take advantage of some of that extra I added on the top of the waistline. Okay, so this is what my patterns look like. Oh, and I wanna point out to you too I wanna talk about one other thing here. So if you have a pattern drafting background 
or if you're very, very familiar with doing lots of pattern adjusting or adjustments, try to let all that out of your mind and sort of clear your mind and just try this process without doing a lot of measuring and thinking about a lot of the things that you think about when you're trying to figure out you know, where you should adjust the pattern. Um, one thing in particular that I really had to think about a little bit differently is the waist art. Now as a pattern drafter and when I developed my happy pants pattern, I did not put the dart on the back leg because I use the dart as a fitting tool once a size is picked out I help people decide where that dart needs to be to create the nicest shape for your butt. So in my head I'm thinking the waist dart is kind of like a bust dart. It creates a cup shape to fit the curve of your behind. But there's also another way to look at this and I have a photo I'm going to show you in a little bit on my first full muslin I made after my first fitting attempt. A dart actually has another job. It pulls in ease from the edge of the pattern and puts it within the pattern. And this is really important because if you need ease, you know, through the hip and butt area, Darts are really important because they actually direct the extra down below the tip of the dart. And if you think about a bust dart um, or a dart in a top, that dart can be rotated all the way around the edge of the pattern. You can have a French dart, you could have a bust dart, you could have a shoulder dart, you could have a waist dart that comes up from the hem of your top. So darts could be in different places on different patterns depending on how the designer wanted that dart to direct the ease to fit your body. So that was interesting for me because I have a really good picture of my back view with the original length of this dart and how it was directing a lot of extra ease I did not need. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. but. You'll notice here, this dart is much shorter than the original dart. I shortened it two inches to get it to um, direct the right amount of ease. And I also took out some of the dart intake. It, I took off a half an inch, well, a quarter on each side of this dart, making it smaller, so directing a little bit less ease down the center or approximate center of the pant to go over my butt. So the dart is going to be essential in directing the ease on the back. Now, if you're working with a pattern that has a pleated front, that would be the same kind of situation where those pleats actually bring in extra ease where you need it. And if you have a, a prominent tummy, pleats in the front of your pants can be um, sort of camouflaging. So I have downloaded a trouser pattern with pleats to try that in this method as well, so you can stay tuned for that. But I just think it's interesting that the dart, in addition to being a fitting device, it's also a director of ease down the back of your leg or in the front of your leg if you have one. All right, so that's my pattern. So now I just want to show you my half muslin, and I want to show you how I made the Velcro work with my waistband. So here's my waistband, and remember I put um, a half an inch, or I put a strip of Velcro at my center back. So to make this work with my pant leg, I put the plush side of the Velcro down the seam allowance of the center back of my crotch seam here. And I think it's important, if you're going to do the Velcro, put the soft one, put the scratchy one on your waistband because it's not against your body. Put the plush side on the inside of your 
muzzle in and then it's not going to scratch you. And notice I put a good eight inch piece here because I wasn't sure where along here it was going to meet up with the back waistband. So when you attach it, it attaches like this. Okay, so you can see the center back, that line is right at the center back right here. And I could move it up or down depending on how I had to adjust my top down first step of fitting the muslin. So I put it there and then I put a second piece like this. See this piece right here? This is just basted on. Okay, so I put one in the front and I put one in the back after I sewed my dart. And speaking of the dart, look how long the original dart is. So I ended up with a dart that was approximately this long instead of being this long. Um, and But anyway, that's the original dart. And these, you don't want to completely shellac the inside of your waistline with the plush Velcro because then it's going to be a pain to pick it up and move it. You want to easily be able to adjust the waistline. You want to easily be able to adjust the side seam. So you don't want to plaster the inside of your half muslin with soft Velcro. You just want to put it in a couple places to be like an extra hand to hold it for you. So again, I had one right here. Okay, and notice again, it's long because I don't know where vertically I'm going to attach it to the waistband. And then when I'm done, you can see here, this just rips right off because I just basted it. So um, I can reuse these pieces. So I'm keeping them all attached to my little Velcro tree here so I can keep reusing the same pieces. But that's how this works. So these strips, the one I just ripped off, would stick onto it from the inside. And it just kind of holds it together for you while you're trying to fit another part of your muslin. Um, I did not put any Velcro or anything near my side seam. And I made sure it didn't hinder where my dart was. Anyway, let's look at the outside of my muslin. So here's one other advantage of having that Velcro when your waistband is on. So let me just do it like this. So it would be like this. Okay. And then let's say this is how it's fitting. I can feel the Velcro through the pant leg so I can dash off the position of the pant leg on my waistband because I can feel it. Okay. Plus the cool thing is if you've got it fitted onto you and it's secure and the Velcro is secure, you can gently take it off, lay it on the table and mark where that seam is without trying to pin it to yourself while you're wearing your um, half muslin. Because after you get it hanging properly, you want to pin it to the waistband and then you want to kind of baste it on. So this, having the Velcro kind of omits the need to do a lot of pinning and also then baste it on because it does stay on pretty nicely. You know, especially if you use the wider pieces, you know, having a two inch width here, you know, it's really secure on that narrow strip. So um, that's why I went with Velcro. Um, but anyway, so this is how my half muslin looks. Now let's just take a quick look at how it looks on my body. So you can see here, I'm wearing my little boy short underwear. And I have my half muslin on. So this is the, what this front view looks like. And then here's the back view. And this was while I was playing with it and I was doing fitting. So the way I did this was after I transferred all of the changes from the muslin, I cut out legs and I just sewed them together because I wanted to see if when the crotch seam was sewn, did the two left and right leg hang like a single leg. And it was pretty close, but I want you to look at this photo of my back view here and notice the extra fabric hanging below the dart 
um, on this back view. This is where I had the dart that was too too much ease being directed down the back of my leg. My butt was not filling it out and I didn't need that much in the dart and I also didn't need it to be as long as it was. So this is something you can look for when you're fitting the back of your pattern. You wanna sew the dart as is and then look and see if it needs to either be moved, shortened, or if there's too much dart intake creating too much ease under the dart. So after I shortened the dart and I did a little bit more fussing with it and you know playing with the front and back rise and then going back to the side and fine tuning the side seam, um, this is what my most current muslin looks like. And you can see it's it fits pretty well. I mean it's still very loose. I have to work at it a little bit more, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an inside peek at the actual process and how it kind of evolves from a single leg to a pair of pants. So in all of these pictures I put the waistband on and the top of the legs were pinned to it. So um, you know the waistband is always there to make sure you're putting them on properly. So so that is my initial review of the top down center out method. I hope that you find this helpful. Um, I'm super excited about it. Like I said I'm going to be fine tuning my peppermint pants. I'm also going to try a trouser with a um, pleated front and I'm going to work with one of my own patterns, my happy pants pattern, to see how those come out as well. I think in the fine tuning, depending on the shape of your pattern, there will be other adjustments or fine tune adjustments that need to be done to finish fitting the pants to get the exact fit you want. But I'm extremely excited about this process and how much easier it seems to be to get much farther along before you start worrying about the crotch shape, for example. So I will be touching on that later, um, but I think you can get pretty close depending on the style. Um, you know, these are very loose, wide leg pants, perfect to practice this technique with. As the leg gets more fitted and more snug, I'm going to see how that goes. I'm not going to say anything about that yet because I haven't tried it, but I am really excited about this method and I really encourage you to give it a try. So if anybody is fitting along with me and they have their peppermint pattern and they want to ask questions, please post those below and I will help you. Um, if you're following along with me on the bodice draft along, last Friday we fine-tuned the fit of our bodice muslins so we can take a final measurement of the armhole to then draft the sleeve. So this Friday I will be drafting the sleeve live during FabFit Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, you know, maybe pop in and say hi. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.